Now this is Hollywood Unlocked. What up, everybody? This is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. I'm Jason Lee. I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Yo, it's DJ Damage. Let's get the show started. Yo, and it's going down. We out here in New York, so those of you watching online saying, what the fuck is, where's the windows at? They, they <laughs> over here. They just in the back. <laughs> Brian Seacrest loaned us his studio. Well, not really. We just took it. Whatever. <laughs> Take over. But we have the one and only young M.A. in the building. Yo, yo, yo. This is yeah. an interview we've wanted for a long time. I heard, man. First of all, I almost felt like, because you never know who doesn't like you. So I'm like, every time I see her, she oh, cool. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, I know she's a real one, but goddamn, do you not like Why you ain't came to Hollywood on Locks? <laughs> what nah. took you so long? Remember when I met you? Yes. This was like, what, two years ago? Mm-hmm. And we was at some event. We were at an event. You were booed up with Tory Bricks. I know. <laughs> that was a minute ago. <laughs> It's okay. The other booze in the background. We just gonna keep it rolling. But I mean, yeah. Last time I saw you, you know, you was booed up. Uh, and, and then when I saw you, you know, you was you was you was very cool, man. You was you came into me. You was like, yo, I love what you're doing. We need an interview. And uh, unfortunately, you know, didn't work out whatever yeah. that way. Off that situation, you know, far as management wise, whatever the case. And, Moved on, and now we're here today. So wait, let me just ask this. This is a very relevant question because yes. we just had Serge Ibaka on the show. And Jason wanted to ask him about a very high-profile relationship. Oh, that... I was about to say I was asking about his dick. I was like, well, oh. yes, that too. We okay. asked about that as well. But um, yeah, he wanted to ask about a very high-profile relationship that Serge had with Carrie Hilson. Um, you know, and Serge was very averse to talking about it. So when the does the question come up obvious like a lot with between you and Tori? No, nah, and... it did at, at, at when it first started, but mm-hmm. like no, no, not at all, not even. Not even a little bit. But, you know, because when people like, you know, you guys are famous. I'm, and you I'm, actually witnessed it. Like, you was there. So the real relationship. I'm about to say you've seen it. So Yeah, it was, a real, it, yeah. it was a real relationship. It yeah. was, it was, it was, I actually, you know, again, I feel so guilty talking about it right now because <laughs> there's people in the room. Mm-hmm. But yeah. everybody knows I got a job to do and shit. If I ain't being me, it wouldn't be, it'd be some mm-hmm. fucked up shit. Mm-hmm. No, but I mean, at the time, you guys seemed very happy. Mm-hmm. And what I loved about you, you know, uh, I've been friends with Queen Latifah for 27 years. Yeah. And and I remember when I first saw you in person, I remember seeing uh, Latifah, Dana, on the set of Living Single, and she had just come off the set of Set It Off. And I looked wow. at you and I was wow. like, uh, this is just taking me back. <laughs> Do people make that, um, that, that uh, you know, connection? Yeah, connection between the two of you? Because it's, yeah, it's not far flung. It's funny you kind of bring that in, into existence because, like, the Set It Off situation, like, people always be like, yo, if they do like a new, you know, I don't I feel like they should touch say. you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that kind of went viral. So it was mm-hmm. like, I looked at it like, hell yeah, I would do it. Like, why not? Oh, like, it's a huge compliment. I mean, yeah, like that role course, was, right. is like, like, then she was like, to me, the star of the movie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Just oh, for, for sure. that, exactly. You know what I mean? So uh, just from that situation alone, just from the movie in itself and just the comparison of, of, of the role she played in that movie and then people who see me in music, they just felt like it was just like a similarity. So that comparison right there was, yeah, I hear that all the time. Well, and I'll, and I'll be honest with you. When people try to remake classics, especially Set It Off, I remember mm. having known yeah. Dana, having known Dana, having just got off the phone with her, walking mm. in the theater, watching her get shot the fuck up. Right. I cried, called her, bitch, you died. Bitch, I'm on the phone. <laughs> you know, it, it was like one of those things where like very few people can remake a classic. And when uh-huh. I see you, I do. if they do make, if they do touch that, yeah. They definitely gotta they have gotta you play Cleo, and they gotta do it right. Man. Yeah, like and and, it, and I don't want to be that person. Be like, yeah, let me do it. Let me do it. No, it gotta be done right. Even if it ain't me, like, if you gonna touch that, it gotta be done. No, right. o- only you. And I, if it ain't you, I'll call her and we'll get the person. Right, I was gonna say, <laughs> why don't we, if we can, play a little game? Who would fulfill those roles? Because they're iconic roles. So you'd be Queen Latifah. Be you'd Queen be Cleo. Latifah. Um, and who would be Jada Pinkett's character? They had like, didn't they have like a viral? They yeah, they, they did. Viral picture. Like they yeah. did, but Kiki nobody. Palmer was somebody. Yeah, Palmer. she's on daytime now. I nobody. think she was. Uh, she was somebody. Uh, I think she was the Kimberly um, Elise character. Was she the the, the, one was, the soft one? The one I was crying. The one was all the crying time. all the time. Oh I no, love, no, no. Or I, Vivica. Vivica. I think she was Vivica. I think character. she was Vivica. Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. I, I, I like Kiki. No, I love Kiki. I love. I'm just saying that role. No. First of all, this is I, I just I just left lip service. Uh, by the way, we're gonna go back to Tory Breaks. We ain't forgot. Um, I just left lip service where I was drinking, you know, and they asked me if what what would I name my sex life? I said set it off. <laughs> but anyway, not that. That's our girl Angela Yee. Enough with that. Okay, so how how did you and Tori end? Because the last wow. time I saw you, I actually had pictures of us on our Instagram. It was the three of us. I was the third Will, a very happy Will. You guys looked happy together. You guys were in paradise. And then and then what? Uh, please, please don't say you cheated. No. I mean, it was relationships, man. Relationships don't 
always work out all the time. You know what I mean? Even prior relationships to that it didn't work out. You know what I mean? And that's just what it was. But you enjoyed the time you were all together. Absolutely, yeah. And so I, we, I mean, we all. You're a lesbian. No, you're I'm not a young man. You're, but I mean, I'm gay, so you don't. You're non title. You know, no title. Do that label. Nah, you know, so, I'm just so, gay. so, but you wouldn't date a guy. Absolutely not. Okay, so then, but you don't. <laughs> That's it. Somebody, I just that, wouldn't date a guy. Somebody asked me if I wanted some pussy. I said, keep fucking with my allergies. <laughs> <if> you <want laughs> <to."> <laughs> so you, so you don't. Uh, you, no pronouns. No they. Nah, bro, I don't no. like that. At first, I thought okay. it was like because everybody said it, but now I'm, I'm like not now, but non-binary. Yeah, man, of I'm that. just young and man. I don't, okay. I don't just, I just don't date dudes. I love okay. women. But you know what I love about the candor and just mm-hmm. like the it's just me is really I'm getting so confused with all the titles. Yeah. Like now it's there's non-binary, straight, gay, lesbian, Q, I, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like the alphabet niggas. people. <laughs> like just love who you want to love. Love who yeah. you want to love. And be happy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you don't buy into the whole political correctness around no, no. who we are as a people. Not even with the even the female rapper thing. I don't mm-hmm. buy into that. Mm. That female rap. I'm You're just a rapper. I'm just young and me. I'm an artist. So Kodak Black, Black tried to play you. And I'm going to tell you, before you respond, because mm-hmm. this ain't a bait into a sound bite. Right. I don't fuck with Kodak Black. I I think he's very disrespectful and reckless. You can be whoever the fuck you want. Right. But like the shit with Nipsey and Lauren, that to mm-hmm. me, like when he did mm-hmm. that to you, yeah, yeah, yeah. when he did that to mm-hmm. you, I, I loved how you responded. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, okay, because you, you you don't come off soft. You can handle your own. You yeah, don't yeah. need the internet to do that for you. Mm-hmm. But the Nipsey Lauren shit was like a bit much. Yeah. When it came, when you felt he came at you, what was your immediate reaction to that? Uh, just to have understanding on that too, like when that whole thing went viral, just because of my response is why I went crazy viral. You know what I mean? If I never said nothing, it wouldn't have really got to where. Mm-hmm. Right. And the fact that I, I said something about, not even Kodak Black, I said something about the people that I kept seeing in my comments talking about. Like that was my, that was who I was talking to. It was just like, yo, y'all, like, just, just chill out. Like y'all, y'all on that situation too much. Like if y'all don't see me talking about it, Leave it alone. Like I, I, you know what I mean. I, I basically how I responded was how I responded, whatever the case. And um, when I first heard it, I didn't really, I didn't so called take offense to it because I know he was trying to do like some little metaphoric thing. Mm. When I heard him, he's like, I hear music in a different way, so I didn't take it to offense right away. You know what I mean? It wasn't until I seen the response from people, from people that just wanted to make it a situation. It was like, yo. Stop trying to make a situation. If I ain't, if I ain't on it, because I ain't that type. Like I don't do the whole. Social you don't do the media. internet. Yeah. I don't do the. Like you, you barely see my name tied to anything, bro. Yeah, so as yeah. soon as it do, it's like they jump at it. You know what I mean? As soon as I say some, oh, young and made, da, 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 you know what I mean? Did you ever have a relationship or any kind of contact with Kodak before this? And for people that don't no. know what we're talking about, if you've been living under a rock, Kodak Black said he would have sex with Young and May. Young and May responded after the internet started talking about it, and then mm-hmm. it went completely out of control viral. But none of y'all ever, you never had a contact with him, never talked to him, never tweeted mm-hmm. him, nothing. This kind of just came out of left field. I know that man from nowhere, man. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and so so we do live in a culture where everybody online has something to say. You know, people pit people back and forth. Why did you decide to respond to that one versus anything else? Because you typically are never on Hollywood Unlock for having gotten into social media shit with people. Right, right. Uh, it was just, it was just, uh, one time I was on live. This is why I went viral was I was on live and I just kept seeing like little trolls in the comments bringing it up. And um, basically I just responded to what they were saying. And then when, when, when the blogs got it, mm-hmm. Cause they now is like oh, the they block, already the they block was is a, hot yeah it's hot, <laughs> hot. You know what I mean so soon they already probably knew it was something sizzling just from what he said in the song so mm. they were just right there like just waiting, waiting for me to just say even just a black just say black mm-hmm. you know what I mean they were just waiting for it. so soon as I just said something in reference to the trolls saying something it was like the blogs took it and said oh young and may response boom, 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 boom. and it just went you know what I mean and it wasn't even to me specifically for Kodak. to him. Right. Yeah, because I don't. If I'm gonna reach out to somebody on or, or or address something to somebody, I'm not gonna do it through social media. That's just never been my style. Like, mm-hmm. I don't do the. I don't express what I'm going through on social media. If I have an issue with somebody, I'm not gonna do it through social media. That's just never been my thing. If we gonna handle it, we gonna handle it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna handle it like yeah. human beings. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just always been me. So when I when I seen it, it was just like a quick little like, yo, y'all get off that. Y'all still talking about like y'all still on that. Like get off my, get out my comments with that. You know what I mean? It was just basically that. And then it just went into boom. So when now, when that went out, it was like now I gotta say something. Now I gotta respond because now it's all over the blogs as if mm-hmm. oh finally MA says respond to this. So now it's like a big thing. I'm like yo, and you know of course y'all seen the videos and, mm-hmm. and what I said. And, 
I feel like I didn't even say really too much. I just felt like they just needed something for me to respond. They needed a mm-hmm. piece of me to respond, and they just took it and ran with so it. So what's your overall opinion of him? You know, because like Jason said, he's very controversial. A lot of people are not fans of his just specifically because of the remarks that he makes. He's, he's a little reckless. He, he's what's, ignorant. Yeah. The crazy thing is a lot of people are fans of his. Yeah. Mm. That's the crazy part. We live in an ignorant society. Right. It's just people. People was just just how they are, how they are. Like I, I, I don't. I would never move like that. Mm-hmm. Like this is not. It's just not in my nature to. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, it just could have been how I was raised. You know what I mean, and how I was brought up. So when you, so when you talk about you being a rapper, I think it's interesting that you make a distinction not to be labeled a female rapper. Mm-hmm. I know, like anytime there's female rappers discussed, they bring you up or bring up men, female. Why do you just? Why do you make a distinction to not want to be put in a box, not in a category? Because, first of all, female rappers alone seems to be the only one in a box because you don't say male rapper. Mm-hmm. Not That's so true. You really don't. Same like actress, and a lot of actresses actress, want right. to say, I am an actor. Actor. Yeah. And, right, and mm-hmm. they try to put the, oh, no, you're an actress thing. Mm-hmm. Like, that alone right there just that's that's one of the reasons why is because when you see a, a male rapper you don't call him a male rapper you just call him a rapper and with female rap it seemed like the female rap thing seemed to be more glorified uh and then the gay rapper thing like that that's like to me is like why I say this is because like I feel like if we don't want to be separated mm-hmm. like if we if we if we unite and we and we doing all this 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 type of uh, thing where we, we want people to accept us for us and stuff like that. Then, as people, just like you're a human and I'm a human, why still separate yourself? You know what I mean? It's just it's it's like to me, it just it just doesn't make sense. So it's just like if you just want to be accepted for who you are, just say, "Yo, listen, I'm me." Mm-hmm. Well, somebody said the other day, the minute you say, "I'm." I was having a conversation with somebody about Rosie O'Donnell when she was a talk show host, right? Mm -hmm. And they were like, yo, you know, she really wanted to come out and say she was a lesbian. She was a lesbian. Mm -hmm. And it was like, everybody already know you a lesbian. People already know. (laughs) What you you just want to say to me? But the minute you say it, people are going to take a side or it's going to divide people on that. And she was hell-bent on doing it. And when she did it, it happened. And it's almost like when you came out, no pun intended, with your with uh, the big single that everybody knows, right, right, you know, ooh. I mean, I didn't look at you as a lesbian or gay. I was just like, this is a fire ass fucking song mean, that we need right. to be mm-hmm. did. Do you right. think did the industry? Because I don't feel, and I wasn't on that side of it. Right. Did the industry fully embrace you as an individual, just doing dope music, or was there a, div- a division? That's I'm, that's crazy. I just really just spoke about this. It's crazy you say this. Um, and that's and that's one of the things I just want to clarify to people. It's, just for people to have understanding on why they think I'm accepted. To me, it's not really acceptance because I didn't come in the game telling people, oh, I'm this rapper, I'm this rapper, accept me, accept me. I came in the game just being me. Like, I was just talking about what I was really going through. It wasn't for me to be like, oh, I'm opening the doors for gay rappers or anything yeah. like that. I didn't, that was not my mentality. The cornrows wasn't for dress up. No. The grill and the diamonds wasn't for dress up. This was just who I wanted to be. This was just me being in my in my comfort zone and just me giving y'all music. And I came in there like, hey, either they going to fuck with me or they not. And if they don't, hey, you know what I mean? And if they do, let's go. Mm-hmm. And that's how I came into it. And 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 I guess people can feel that. Like, they have understanding on that. Like, oh, it's not no gimmick word. Like, she's not trying to prove something or nothing. She's literally just being her and she don't care. Mm-hmm. And I, it wasn't something for you to have to accept. It was just like, she's just an artist... Like she's not even if you don't if you don't just if you don't like what I'm saying, that's on you. But if you can just respect, you know what I mean, just me expressing myself, then that's what it is. How did people how did the industry embrace you? Cause you know, you have Lil Nas out here now, the rodeo country. What's, yeah, the, yeah. what's the song called? Uh, Old Town Row. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have Old Town Row, he out here with his boots, and people he's now openly <laughs> yeah. gay. He's now his boots. <laughs> the fucking boots. <laughs> I saw him at the VMAs. The nigga could dress though, low key. And yesterday, really like that suit he was wearing at the VMAs. And yesterday, I saw a picture of him with a mask on. I fuck him with the mask on, but anyway, oh that's, my god, I Jesus. digress. <laughs> I called him ugly on the show. So yeah. when when you see him now coming out and being able to f- f- you know live out his dream and be at the top of the charts, mm-hmm. do you believe the industry is becoming more accepting? Because you know, I told Nick Cannon when I did Wild and Out mm. that accepting and tolerant two different things. You yes. can right. tolerate a gay nigga around yeah. is one right, right. thing, but when you can accept me and mm-hmm. embrace what I bring to the mm-hmm. show, that's different. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you think people are 
tolerating it because it's a hot song, or do you think people are finally ready to embrace rappers who aren't like traditional or other rappers? I think you got both. Honestly, I think you got people that just want to tolerate, and you got people that just accept them. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think it's like just this and just that. Mm -hmm. I think it's like you know either or. It's like some people tolerate and some people didn't accept. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He got a hot record. You know what I mean? And he has this this spirit about him where he just don't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not to the point where he's hot now or he's like, oh damn that I like like he's just like hey, yep. You know what I mean? And then and and honestly to me, I don't even I didn't even really know if he really came out because the way he yeah, went we about it about you know yeah. what I mean yeah, like, trust me that. all of us were confused it's like we you're like, still like is he was, yeah. but okay. how, how do you no, feel no no wait wait, yeah. wait let her finish that because <laughs> I got trolled online yeah. see people think I be just talking shit yeah coming out is a very real thing for yeah. people yeah. you're either right. gonna come out or you're gonna not come out yeah right. but, but don't that, troll but don't play around with yeah. it right, because right. there are kids that kill themselves yeah. over being over outed yeah. or yeah, yeah. afraid mm -hmm. to come out so when you did you because me and taylor bennett been going back and forth taylor bennett chance the rapper's brother openly mm -hmm. bisexual mm -hmm. i wish he was gay because i'd like to marry him but when you <laughs> but when, when you see like when you saw him coming out were you were you clear that he was coming out or? no i wasn't clear uh but in a way, I think maybe he did it in a smart way where uh, it left you clueless. Is is like, is he or, or or is he not? But to me, I think he is because I don't think I like. Why would you play like that? You know what I mean? That's 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 nothing to just play around with, like randomly. Like it just mm -hmm. came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like we expected it from the song. Mm -hmm. It's not like he said anything on the song that made you be like, oh, is he? Da -da -da? Like he initially said it. But you know what's interesting is. Correct me if I'm wrong. No one's come up, you know, popped up and said, "Well, I'm his ex boyfriend," or you know, "I'm a." I hit it. A, a, yeah, right, right. I hit it. No, you know? I hit it. No, shut up, Jason. Yo, so, <laughs> you think somebody? You think somebody... <laughs> I'll give your ass a old town road, nigga. Keep playing. Like no, none of his uh, former sexual partners, current or former, have popped up. I mean, to... he's like 21 though. He might. What if he don't have uh, do it? You, uh, I'm about to say he. he, he oh, might not have I was sucking was... dick at 14. He's, I was gonna different, say. Though. When did, okay, we can. It, I'll interview you later. Damage. Sorry, Young and May. This is Hollywood. <laughs> Listen, it is what it is. Man. No, I'm so happy that you're here. I mean, I've always, I've always admired you, and I like mm -hmm. the fact that like you came in with such confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, like I know how the industry is. It does try to train Pain you. It'll teach you how to change. It mm -hmm. won't tell you to change. It'll teach you how to change. Mm -hmm. It'll consequence you for not being what they want you to be. And I really love how you came in. Uh, and not really getting the credit for knocking down barriers because there's a lot of lesbian or bisexual rapper, female rappers who are afraid to live in their truth. Where did that confidence come from? Oof. Yo, for a long time, I, uh, I held this this little secret, you know what I mean, since a little kid, man. You know, uh, and as a kid, you know, you don't understand this shit. Like, you don't know what the hell you you. you thinking or, or why you feel this way or why you feel that way you know what I mean because when you grow up you're growing up to to man and woman you know what I mean and in and, and your household and then TV and things like that this is what you see you see the normal and me growing up I honestly thought I was the only one like I'm talking about in the world like I didn't think nobody felt like how I felt wow. mm -hmm. literally like I felt like it was a secret I felt like I had my own little disorder situation like I did not understand it I just wanted to know why did I like a female more so than I like the man. Like I, it was just. I feel like the greatest moments in our lives are the moments that we discover we're not special, and right. not special in the you know your mom tells you you're special right, every right. day, but that our problems are not unique, and exactly. that there's a whole group of people mm -hmm. that That's, have this, and it's not a problem. Just like have the same you know situation, like right. they can identify with what I'm talking about, with what right. I'm going through. So I totally understand you. Right, that. and see, and I express my my situation in a different way. Where at growing up, I was a tomboy. Mm -hmm. I didn't have female friends. I wasn't playing with Barbie dolls and stuff. Were like you that. playing basketball? I was playing basketball. I played football. I played football on a football team. I was the only girl on the team. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm talking about tackle, not not flag football. I'm talking about, I'm talking about equipment, helmet, everything. Mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. the only girl on the team. You know what I mean? So it was like I was saying who I was, but I didn't say who I was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was just as a kid. That's how I know it was just instilled in me because from a kid, I just wanted to do things differently than what – I guess society teaches us mm -hmm. because I still don't want to put a label like a girl, boy, because mm -hmm. we don't know if girls supposed to be this way or boys supposed to be. I don't like, like who says this? But, like, did, but did you ever stop in your journey since you've become <laughs> famous and had like worldwide notoriety to accept that you've changed the perspective on what is or is not acceptable in rap? Right. 
Because I don't think I've right. never seen you take accolades for it or really like you know. Because I don't I don't think you're doing this for that. Right. But you're doing it right. because people can look at you and see themselves. I mean, like, have you ever like just sat with it and said, "Yo, I know I'm changing the game." Right, right, and yes, and in, in interviews, I do, I do speak on it and just let people know, like, it's not me saying, you know, like this. It's just me. Like, in order to be acceptance, you can't like. So first of all, you can't force people to like you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's first and foremost. I've been trying it; don't work. <laughs> like you, you, you just, yeah. you just can't. When it when it becomes a forceful thing, people don't feel like genuine to it. So when you just you naturally, it can't like fuck what they talking about. It can't affect you because mm -hmm. you're just you. Mm -hmm. It's not like you putting in work to make that motherfucker like you. No, you just love you and you like hey, hey, if you don't like me, you don't like me. If you do, you do. So side note, I'm gonna go back to the hit single "Ooh," mm -hmm. um, but because of the video, there was somebody in that video who was so fine. I was gonna screenshot it and send it around to get to you. Uh, he had a gun in his hand, so I didn't. But anyway, he was really, really gorgeous. <laughs> I don't know if he's in Dykeman or Washington Heights, where that nigga's from. But if he's available, I'm here. Do you know right. who he's talking about? Yeah, that's my brother. Yeah, she know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna mind my own business. I knew it was her brother too. I just want to throw that I, over there. Can I see a picture? <laughs> no. Okay, so when that single came out and you were like at the top of the charts, you were out here. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of comments. There was a lot of stuff going on online with promoters and business, dr drama in your business. And you told me the other night, first thing you said was, I got new management. Let's make it happen. Literally right. ran into you last night at Rihanna's party. Right. And exactly. here you are. Right. I've been trying to get her for I don't know how long. When did you decide? What was going on at the time? Was it just bad management? Was it What was it? Um, I just felt like it was inexperienced management. Mm. I wouldn't really say bad. I just felt like. It just probably wasn't enough experience. Like I felt like if 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 that's the case, like I could have managed my damn self mm -hmm. at, at one point. You know what I mean? Uh, everything was like new. It was fresh. Uh, everything just came. You know. You know. Just you know. Not. I wouldn't say suddenly because I've been grinding for this, but like the fame and just just this record that just blew up. Overnight success usually takes about ten years. Right. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? So mm -hmm. basically that. So. I was working with these people, you know, prior to the record coming out or whatever yeah. the case. So it was like always, you know, the team and the hustle, whatever the case. So when things came about, I don't think they knew how to handle it, handle it either. Mm -hmm. Because it, it never it never happened for them neither. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this was their first encounter with it as well as mine. So I'm like a real loyal person. When I got somebody next to me and we rocking and I see you looking out for me, and I'm looking out for you, and we just going. That's where I'm at with it. You're you know going to write I mean? it out to a fault. I'm mm -hmm. going to write it out to a fault. You know what I mean? And, unless I specifically see something. You know what I mean? Like, I got to literally see it. I, I'm, Your I'm accountant told you they stole money. There's something, like, if they told you the stuff no, like no, that. No, nothing Nothing was stealing no, no, anything. No, meaning you would have to see something tangible. Right, right, right. Like exactly. You stole some money from yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For me to just be like, you know what I mean? Uh, Unfortunately, you know, just I'm the type of person I would test you. I touch you before I cut you off because I'm so I'm so I'm so uh, I'm strongly uh, a person that when it comes to loyalty, like I'm strongly like I believe in that real mm -hmm. strongly. You know what I mean? So if I have you with me, I'm gonna test you before I, I I decide to say you know what I can't rock with you no more. Did, I'm gonna give you that test. Did that contribute to the <laughs> album just finally coming out now? Was it because no 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 or that was no, the no, plan you had? No, that was on me. My album situation had nothing to do with management. That was me. You know what I mean? That's I'm independent. So anything, any decisions I make is because of me. We got to handle it from there or whatever the case. But, like, with that situation, like, uh, you know, I, 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 I had to fall back and look at things. Because, you know, when everything going on, you don't see. Mm. You're in the midst of You're it. You're too close. But we're, yeah. Because yeah. well, I was saying to them the other mm. day, like, stuff now is starting to happen really fast for me. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm trying to make sure I slow down enough to, like, make the right decisions, be right. strategic, and not... Because it's going so fast. It's that going it, so fast. Did you feel like you were just caught up in a whirlwind of it? Because, I mean, your, your single came out of nowhere, and, I mean, yeah. you were yeah. everywhere. It was everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it was new. It was fame. You know what I mean? And, and it's something I worked, you know, so hard for. And it's like, oh, I'm finally here. Now, like, oh, shit. Now what now we do. What, yeah, like, now <laughs> what we do. So it was like, okay, I got my management. Management handle this. You know what I mean? Y'all handle it. I got to focus on this. I got to focus on that. You got to sleep, to or get up, perform. Yeah, I mean, it's, you have a it's lot. so much. You know what I mean? And people don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Not Sometimes not even including the artists. You know what I mean? Like, But I'm the type of person where I don't always just let that slip by me neither. You know what I mean? Like, I'll snap back like, hold on. What's going on over here? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We doing all this. Ah, ah, ah. All right, boom. What's going on back here, though? You know what I mean? And 
it got to a point where I did when I did have time to like slow down and observe everything and just look back and 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 see things I noticed a difference because listen people don't understand like when you're when you have a hit record and everything shit just comes to you Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. people is calling. It's, it's different than in. calling and pitching. Now you pick right. it up and yes right. or no. Right. So now yeah. management kind of shifts. Now it goes from trying to make shit happen to, to now everybody. Yeah. To now. Now yeah. to that. So yeah. now it's like you know what I mean. So it just got to that point, and uh, you know, not to bring nobody down or, or talk bad on, on anybody that that was once in in my circle, but it became where it just became less of like about doing it for MA and more so like. Doing it for them. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the Their switch? Their Instagram like, pro- what was profiles the, were popping. What, what was the, <laughs> well, two questions. What what was the switch for you that made you say, you know what, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna take control of this now and go in a different direction? Well, the first thing I did was cut down that that percentage. Mm. I said, listen, speak, if we ain't gonna keep speak on it. If we ain't gonna be if <laughs> we ain't gonna if we ain't gonna be putting in work, you know what I mean? We gotta bring that percentage down. You know? Mm-hmm. And that was the first thing for me. It was like, you know, I ain't gonna just cut you off because I still didn't see nothing crazy mm-hmm. that, that I seen. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And I, you know, like I said, I, I had to sit back and reflect. And then when I noticed, you know, things wasn't just up to my standards, and I felt like it just wasn't working out. And I felt like if I can put somebody else in this position that is just that I know personally and that's willing to work, then I'm gonna take take advantage of that. And it became to a point where it was like, okay, now I gotta make this decision. It was it wasn't it wasn't an easy one. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it was necessary. Mm-hmm. Talk about being independent because I feel like a lot of artists want to be independent. There's artists that sign that's pretending to be independent. Yeah. You got to do all this. Wait, work. wait, wait, what? Yeah, there's people no. that pretend to be independent Absolutely. just to have that fan Ain't base to act like they're doing it on their own. You don't have that machine behind you, you know. So I'd never heard that before. That's a real thing. Is that that's real? real? Yeah, she mm-hmm. can talk about it. But uh, what is it like to truly be independent? Yeah, like just, what's that yeah let's just Wait, lock that in there. Pl- we officially independent. Please over here. break this down because honestly, <laughs> I know a lot of shit. I ain't never heard That's that. A real is it because thing. The, is it because the struggle is attractive? Like, is, would that well, be why somebody? Well, you probably relate to a lot be... of SoundCloud artists who are or artists who are like coming up who mm. are fighting for their dream. Yeah, I still don't understand it. I don't know why people do that. See, but you know it. about it. Yeah, I do, <laughs> and I still don't understand why. Like, say you're independent, you're not. Mm. I don't. I still don't get it. But talk about what it, it truly means to be independent, because there's a lot of artists that look up to you, that look up to these fake independent artists that right, want right. to do that grind, and they don't know how much goes into it. Right. Um, and when we say independent, we mean not signed to a label. You can mm-hmm. have marketing distribution. Yeah. And you can have your management. That's your team. You know what I mean? You need marketing distribution. You need somebody to market you. You know what I mean? Because you can't. You can do it on your own, but you still need a, some type of push. So I had marketing distribution for the past four years now, since 2015. You know what I mean? Before even ooh and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 uh, I just want people to understand, like, being independent is so hard, but yeah. you got to be prepared for it. Like, it got to be something like you got to be the motherfucker that feel like you're superior. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you got to handle things. If you want them type of people that's just more like dependent, you want people to rock for you, then go to a label. Mm-hmm. Me, I don't like people having control of my craft. You know what I mean? I don't like people telling me when I need to drop. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, cause I, that was never me. Like, I've been grinding for so long and I did things my way for so long to 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 work so hard and just now you gotta wreck it and now everybody jumping in mm-hmm. to just basically get all that. Mm-hmm. To me, that's how I look at it. But being independent, yes, it takes much more time. It's it's not a machine, like you said, that machine is is not as big as a, a label. Labels is fucking powerful. Yeah. But as independent artists, you become your own machine and you compete against these bigger machines, but at the same time, you are you get to you you enjoying get the, the yeah. fruits yeah. of your labor. So Chance the Rapper, who we have coming on the show soon, uh, was I mean, he came out the gate as an independent rapper, caught a lot of love from Jay Z, Beyonce. A lot of people were like fanfaring over him being independent. Is he independent? I don't know. I'm, I'm, do you, I mean, do you I'm not, know? I can't really speak. I mean, like I said, we. I mean, I don't know specifically if he's independent or not. I mean, I mean, he's done some deals with major streaming services. I guess it just breaks down to what I consider. What's the definition of independent? Well, like she just said, you know, a lot of people are still going to have their marketing and distribution, but everything else happens herself. Like when she wants to put on her tour, she has to handle it herself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how. I don't know the inner workings of Chance the Rapper's. Well, team. now we got a new question for Chance. We got Chance. Okay, so what what do you say to the young male or female rapper, hip hop artist? There's a difference between hip hop and rap, no? There used to be back in the day. I don't know. 
What do you say to that new artist? <laughs> there was. Yeah, no, there, was. there is. No, there was. What? Yeah, no, it rap was. music is fo fo focused Too more short. on, yeah, rap. lyricism, would yeah. you say? Yeah, yeah. So, and then hip hop is more. Hip hop is the boss. So yeah. to the new artist who's like, okay, I want to get in the business. I look up to Young and May. I want to be a star like her. What is what advice would you give them right now before they come in, knowing that fame could come at any moment and they need to be ready? The number one thing when it comes to being an independent artist and developing your brand is building that fan base. Mm. Without that loyal fan base, you have nothing. Mm -hmm. mm. You need the labels. Mm -hmm. You need probably other artists to be featured on, for your name to be heard. But when you develop a fan base, like I'm talking about like that's your family, like gang gang, and they solidify it, you're good. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's just, that's like the, the number one thing. Everything else is just like, uh, you know, the, the the icing on the cake, but the cake of, it, of itself is that fan base. And you got it because I swear every time you drop a song, mm -hmm. there's a girl that I can get in the car with it's the young, young, uh, new freestyle for Young and May. And I'm like, what's this? Young and May got more bitches than you. <laughs> because I, I dedicate to them. Facts. Everything I do is I dedicate to them because without them is no me. And you have to show that. People feel that. Like, even if you so far away, they can't touch you. But something you say will make a, a, a person feel you. Mm -hmm. And people know, like, when I came into the game, I didn't come with no gimmicks, no none of that. Like, I came out being me. I came out just... Who I was, and I always showed appreciation. I never not like did. I was never the the unhumble type. Like mm -hmm. I came in, I always show love. I'm always just cool. Mm -hmm. And anytime, I don't care what success I got. You know what I mean? I don't care what I done done in my past. How many how many views, streams, or records I sold, or whatever the case. Every time I drop a song, I thank my fans for every freaking view. Mm -hmm. Anything, any stream, any view, any purchase, anything yeah, they I've ever do. That. Literally, you know what I mean, and they they lock that in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. You can't be like a lot of people have fans that's temporary because you're hot. Mm -hmm. You're hot. You're talked about right now. When that fades, what you got? What I you got? I was just about to say I was in a room where Cardi B was literally Bodak Yellow had just her album had just come out and she was like shit was mm -hmm. just on fucking fire and she was in a mm -hmm. room with J Cole. And she said to him, man, like, this shit is stressed. Like, she's stressed out because you want to get another hit after Bodak yeah, Yellow. Right. You had, ooh, after that, did you feel the pressure of trying to compare to that? Of course you do. You know what I mean? Because this is this is new. So, like, I never had a hit record before. You know what I mean? It's, it's the new thing. So it's like, ah, damn, do I need another hit record? Yes, I thought of those things, of course, as an artist. When you when you in it now, you 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 finally made it to where you got to make it. So now you do get that pressure. It's not just the pressure on you. You get pressure from other people. Did you feel like you had to, did you try to change your style a little bit to try to make that next hit? Was uh, it ever, did you ever had that pressure? Like maybe I should switch it up, try to do something this way to make me try, make, follow up a, a Yeah, you a go quicker. through all those emotions. If, 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 if I said no, I'd be lying. Mm -hmm. You go through all those emotions, bro. You go through the emotions. If, if I'm human. You know what I mean? You're going to think of these things. It's not like you just know the game. You don't mm -hmm. just know. So I definitely went through the emotions of like, what do I do next? Do I supposed to sound like this? Do I supposed to? I went through these emotions, but then I had to like pull myself together and remember why the fuck I did this in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it trust me, it comes, it comes, <laughs> it comes. Like you gonna feel that, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta shake through it, man. And and then I just got to a point where I said, you know, people love you, right? They love your music. You know what I mean? Is you don't have to make music for the motherfuckers that's. On the outside and, and, and bandwagon and in your face because you're the hottest thing right now. Mm. You already had a fan base. Remember that? Mm. That's Make the shit. music for them. So I was at dinner the other night and Fabulous walked in. And this is a real question that I don't want to be blamed for being shady. So I'm going to say it very slow okay. so people can hear that I'm not being shady. Because so Fab is amazing. I mean, he's mm -hmm. had his run. When was the last time Fab had a hit? Like a hit single? Like a, number, like a hit single. That's a damage question. He, no, nah, he's more of a project rapper at this point. Like people look forward to his projects. What does project. that mean? As in, like when he drops his soul tapes and everything. That's what you're more so looking for Fab for, like the whole project. Okay. Okay. But, but they still respect Fab. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like people treated you the same way after you had the hit single? The same way, because I I do feel like there's a disparity in how male and female rappers. 
I love that you came in saying out the gate, I don't like no label. I'm just yeah. a rapper. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I and I feel it and I know people are gonna feel it. Yeah. But do you feel there's a distinction between how they treat female rappers or rappers who happen to be female versus rappers who happen to be male? Uh I don't know. I um we gotta you got I right, so give me a person example. Okay, I, if I put Cash Doll on the table, okay. you're, you've had a bigger hit than her. If mm -hmm. I put Dream Doll on the table, you've had a bigger hit than her. Okay. If I put every other female and I can go down males too, I right. don't know a, a Kodak Black song that was bigger than ooh. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know hip hop like that. Maybe you do. Do you? Right, right. I know. I know. Uh, so what I'm saying, saying is. Right. Cause I'm on some shit right now. If you go to my Instagram, where I say I'm not with the fake love. Give pay me my motherfucking respect. Right. People will say Hollywood Unlocked is a blog. I started this from paper, and now I have a nationally syndicated show. Mm -hmm. I heard 52 markets and growing, Hello. and a talk show coming, and all this. And I started it from an idea that niggas need to talk to niggas on some real shit mm -hmm. and give everybody mm -hmm. a platform to tell their side. That's right. But but I still get called a blog because it's easy to categorize a young nigga who does a. A blog. He's a blog. No, I'm an entertainment media company. This is what I am. Right. Do you feel like you're given the same respect in the game for your contribution as, say, maybe some of your counterparts? Male counterparts. Uh, to me, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I, I just want to say this because this kind of can go into to that question. This industry is about to me kissing ass. Mm. Mm -hmm. Speak on it. You know what I mean? And I just never been that. You know what I mean? And and no matter how you try to move or maneuver this game, it's only about that. Mm -hmm. It's fake. It's meant to be fake. It's meant to be fun. It's, it's like running for office. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's always been that way. It's going to forever be that way. There's no such thing as this industry. Everybody just real. It's supposed to be shake hands and smile in somebody's face, even if you don't like them. Yeah. Is what it's about. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people get that type of recognition off relationships. You know what I mean? It's not. Well, like, let's speak on Meg Thee Stallion. I met her recently. I love her. I'm going to start mm -hmm. by saying I love her. She's the nicest, sweetest person. And, you know, I put her on the phone with Cardi. Hopefully they do a song so I get my 10%. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like she's hopping up on everybody's Instagram. She's over here with Jordan Wood. She's over here with this person, this person. I know she, and she is the hot girl having the hot girl summer. Mm -hmm. But is that the politics you're talking about? And you're not talking about Meg Thee Stallion, but in, in per se, like. And also to, Meg is a signed artist. Yeah, but you have to be very mixy. Like you have to be on everybody. You got to be mixy. You have to be mixy. That's a perfect way to put it. You got to be mixy. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, it's just not in my nature to be. I can't not be that. And no offense to anybody else that's on that wave. That's you. That's you. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. That's not. I'm your, just saying it's not just not route. my thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And the industry is based off mixiness. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it feels good to have your third big single and it's no features and you did it all on your own. Yeah. How'd you link up with Mike Zombie for this last one? Because this this is probably one of my favorite joints from you. That's my guy, man. Mike Zombie. I met him in L.A. Uh, about, what was that, 20? Yeah, 2018, beginning of 2018. So a little over a year now I met up with him in, in L.A. And when I linked him, we got in the studio. I, I found out he wanted to you know, give me a few beats. So when we linked him in the studio, he just put on some shit and we just was recording. You know what I mean? And before I did the big record, this was the big record was more recent. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I linked him, we did some a couple other joints. Like I got a couple joints with with Zombie that I that I have that I never even released or even have on the album. When he sent me that beat, it was just different. And a lot of people not familiar with Mike Zombie, like they yeah. don't know. Like he has some joints. Like he did the uh, Drake started from the bottom. Yeah, a lot of people forgot that. Yeah. Then he did the uh, shit with DJ Khaled and, and Jay Z. Jay -Z. Like he has, you know, like, and I feel like Zom's. he's, yeah, Zom got some, you know what I mean? I feel like he should have got way more recognition than than he has because he, to me, honestly, that record <clears throat> he did with Drake, Started From The Bottom, shifted Drake's sound. Mm -hmm. If you've noticed before Started From The Bottom, that sound was, like, Drake what, what sounded Drake was very, like, singy, like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and, and then Started From The Bottom monotone. became slow. Yeah, mm -hmm. And yeah. the beat itself is like, Drake couldn't help it. The beat made him, like, Going that lane, so a lot of people don't even realize like Mike Zombie's really a goat, and 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 far as producing wise, like he has his own sound. And shout out to him because he's from Jersey, from up top. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't know that neither, but he's he's just different. So when he sent me that beat, it kind of gave me that vibe again. That started from the bottom vibe, 
You know what I mean? He has that way about him. And he's different. He don't sound like nobody. So when I heard it, the beat just gave me like that, just say whatever. like, And it was like just a bop to it. You know what I mean? And it just gave me like that vibe. And Yeah, that's, that's the joint yeah. I got on repeat in the gym every day. That's that's my joint, the big yeah. I'm going to have crazy. to add that to my playlist. That, it's crazy. That's my joint. And it's right crazy now. because, like, like, everybody know, you know, I don't really, like, the whole radio thing, I, you barely hear Young Man on the radio, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But when I drop a record, that shit go. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost 20 million on YouTube with no radio play, no label. So I wanted to ask you about your foundation, Queens. Right. And the, you're still active in, in that? Right. Okay. So it came from, you know, a, a really, it's inspired from a really sad place and a really sad time in your life where mm-hmm. um, your brother, Kenneth, was stabbed to death by his former friend, Mm-hmm. Um, and you missed school due to depression and mourning, and then you went to therapy to deal with the tragedy. Mm-hmm. Um, I just recently had my own, you know, tragic circumstances where I was in a near-death car accident, and mm-hmm. and uh, therapy was a major component towards my healing. Okay. Um, do you still uh, integrate uh, therapy into like your, you know, your your repertoire? I tried. Yeah. I tried to do therapy. I couldn't do it, man. I just I didn't get the. I didn't get the the spiritual benefit. Mm-hmm. benefit from another person. Like I just didn't feel like I, me saying this to this person mattered. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I mm-hmm. didn't feel like I just didn't get it. Like my energy didn't feel good about it, and uh, music became my outlet. Mm. You know what I mean? But sometimes that happens. You yeah. know, I mean, I've I, a cheap th- form of therapy for me was acting class at okay. one point in my life where I went through a period of depression. So sometimes creativity is the right. outlet, you know, right. that you need. But so how does that, you know, how does what you went through factor into the message of Queens as a foundation? Because, you know, what by research, why, uh, by research, it says it's helping those residing in her East New York neighborhood overcome the grief and trauma that comes with the loss of a loved one. Right. So. What is it that you guys kind of so, do to support the community? The uh, the Queens Foundation, if you notice, you know, I consider myself a queen with mm-hmm. a K, which is a king and a queen mm-hmm. and one. So we basically bring that into uh, to the foundation, basically represent our kings and our queens out here. And uh, I, I don't want people to just think it's necessarily about, you know, someone losing someone either. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's so many roles. It's like, you know, kids without a father. Uh, that's, you know, incarcerated because that's something I experienced as mm-hmm, well. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And just having a single mother taking care of everybody. And uh, it just it just goes into to any situation, you know what I mean? If you're less unfortunate, you know what I mean? You're less fortunate and your situation isn't that, whatever. Like, that's what we're trying to get back to. But, like, definitely stem from, you know, the passing of my brother. Uh, uh, that was, like, a real, a real life changer in my life like, mm-hmm. you know. I, I, I lost a brother when i was 19 he got murdered at my going away party and it was oh, wow. probably the most devastating thing that's happened to me and i was asked recently uh if you could change one thing about your life what would it be mm-hmm. that's the one thing i would want to say yeah then on one hand his death really transformed my life right. yeah. you know it's like a, you right know what I'm it's saying? like a it's a gift and a curse man when you when you really think about it and it puts you in a position where you almost feel guilty, but do you feel guilty? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's weird. Feel guilty for feeling guilty. Right. Yeah. You, know? you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and I was 17 when I lost my brother, so I, I, I can relate on that level, like being a, a teenager. Your brother was older than you or younger? He was older than me. Okay, yeah, my brother was older than me. He was he was 20 when he got killed. So he didn't even see 21 yet. And uh, it, it definitely was like a, a, a life changer for me because when you're so used to someone in a household with you, mm-hmm. And my brother inspired me a lot. Like I think he's the reason why I'm probably even the way you are. The way I am. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just probably liking girls. Mm. Playing I'm the reason why he I mean, he's the reason why I probably play football because mm. he was on a football team. Like I really looked up to my brother. It wasn't yeah. just like, oh, this is just my brother. Mm-hmm. Uh like that was my my other half, my everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to lose him, it put me in, in like a lonely feeling. Like it was like losing basically your other half. So it had to like Mentally, I had to prepare for moving on in life without this person that I'm so used to next to me. Yeah. So now I'm just like, I got to take care of my family now. I got to mm. take care of my mother. I have a little sister, you know, too, uh, that, that came about. with Me and my brother was always like one, but my little sister came out later on in the years. So mm-hmm. she don't really understand the bond I had with my brother prior right. to that, you know. 
But now I have to take care of her and have her understand. She was young when he died, so she didn't really. She she was like a baby. She yeah. didn't understand it or whatever the case. So, uh, I'm I'm but I, I'm happy that she don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the way I feel about how it affected me, I this last thing I would want her to go through. It, like, it's a lifetime of torment. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, no matter how many years go by, I mean, you know, no the, matter the, like the how the emptiness of the whole family, family when you lose yep. somebody, you know, yeah. the effect. How did you? How did you find yourself? Because it took me a long time to really like gather. Yo, life. I don't even think I ever. I don't. I don't know if you ever. Re you don't ever recover. I don't All you do is just keep stay moving. busy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Th I don't think you do. I mean, I lost my father when I was almost sixteen years old, and there was. Uh, there continues to be an empty void. Yeah, you know? there's no it, such thing. Anybody that ever say, you know, you survive. I've, I've overcome it. You survive. Yeah, you're surviving. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. all you can do. You're surviving. Mm -hmm. How did you keep his memory alive, though? Like, besides, because, you know, so, you know, when somebody dies tragically, you typically remember that for a long time, and right. then you forget the other stuff, or you don't put that in front of those thoughts. But, like, how do you think about him now? Like, how does he live through you now? Uh, just, man, like, it's 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 like it's like hard to like because you you you're not only dealing with the death of of him you're dealing with your mother mm -hmm. losing a child mm -hmm. you know what I mean so it's like so much more responsibility you know what I mean on 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 you definitely when you're the fight you know financially taking care of things uh you're looking at it like a, a, a just somebody that was just like a part of the family that was just like the one that tied everything together and then you lose that so like music to me was like my only way of like trying to like just i guess express that and 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 let it be known like even with the queen's foundation just having people understand like losing a a, a brother or a sibling or anybody that's close to you like is like one of the the most hardest things you can deal with because it's not just losing someone you you just met or don't really know like this is somebody you grew up with mm -hmm. from the time you know you was born you know mm -hmm. what i mean so your life is shifted is no other it's not that way no more it's yeah. not the same no more so you're literally preparing for a whole new life like every day is a, is a, is a, it's like living a whole new life to me like when that day happened i literally changed in, uh, to a whole nother person mm -hmm. you were test you were you know, there's power and testimony. You're telling a lot of people's story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Last yeah. last two weeks ago, whatever, when I ran into Latifah and I was with Cardi, I put them together, and I've been trying to get Queen to Dana to mentor her because I'm like, you know, Cardi's dealing with fame and success and all that, and right. you don't know who's real and who's not, and there's all that. Mm -hmm. But but when my brother got murdered, Dana was the person that was on the phone with me that night because it's a very wow. lonely feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You like your mind is just Absolutely. really trying to understand what's happening. Yeah. Who was there for you at that time? Oh, that's a good question. Nobody ever asked me that. Uh, well, when that situation happened, I I couldn't get in contact with my mother. My mother was calling me. I was sleeping. It, was, it happened like 12 midnight or 1 in the morning or whatever the case. At that time, my mom and them had uh, just left to where he was at, uh, the situation that happened. So I didn't, couldn't get in contact with them or whatever the case. My cousin uh, actually did something that I wouldn't even thought that she would do when I when I came to her house, I remember I was crying. Uh I couldn't get in contact with my mom. So I, I just was lost. Like I didn't know what mm -hmm. you know, I, I was gone, bro. Like I was in the fucking twilight zone. I didn't know where I was. She came up to me and brung a a, a C D full of beats. Her stereo, like a little stereo, and a piece of paper and pen. And it said basically like here, like right. Damn. Wow. Did you it's do powerful. it? Yes. You did it right away. Have you came ha, right have up. you written a song in dedication to him? Yes. What's the I'm, song? I'm, I done made so many songs like even before I was famous like that I, I don't put out on mixtapes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like it's this song called Through the Day on this mixtape I dropped. Um, it's called uh, uh, damn, what's the name of the damn mixtape? I got it made a mixtape, and then I got another mixtape where on the song is called Through the Day where I'm basically speaking about just my life and. My little sister, my little sister was premature. Uh, so my little sister wasn't even supposed to live. That's that's what make it even worse is mm. that my little sister was born one pound, 12 ounces. Mm. Wow. She wasn't even supposed to live. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this is before my brother died. My mom was going through this experience where she was about to lose her or whatever the case. And we called it a miracle baby because she wound up surviving. 
You know what I mean? To this day, she's healthy. She's good. She's like 15 now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But this happened back then. And then to lose, like, my brother. Like, it was just too, it was just too much. It was much. a lot at once. Just too much, you know? And I, I didn't I didn't really I didn't really know how to, 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 to handle that. But on that song, it was just basically speaking about that moment, like, about to lose my sister and then losing a brother. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that was, like, one of the most craziest things I, I, I experienced in my life. And so on this album... I have a song on there called No Love. Mm-hmm. And this is the first time I ever spoke on this song too. Like, y'all the first to get mm-hmm. this. On the on the album, it's a song called No Love. And it's basically speaking about the situation that my brother was at when he got killed. He was with somebody that he used to be around. You know what I mean? This is somebody he was playing Xbox with. You know, and he, uh, you know, he was, he was, you know, gang banging. So it's like a Nipsey Hussle kind of situation. Yeah, and and in a and, little Snoop situation. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like somebody, you know, you somebody you've been around. So it's like you have certain some type of trust for this person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just to have him around you, and to turn around and the same person kill you. You know what I mean? It, it just leaves you. Like yeah. I already was a person that don't really trust too hard, but like that really just had me on something. Like I can't really trust people. That's why I keep my circle so small. And I have a song on the album called No Love, and I basically speak upon that situation it's throughout crazy. the whole song. Because it's not just my brother. It's a lot of people in the world that has experienced that situation where you have somebody close to you end up killing you. And it'd be your own circle. You know yeah. what I mean? I think, yeah. it's, I think it's awesome to be able to be an artist and be able to put those emotions and feelings into art. Queen mm-hmm. Latifah's song, Winky's Theme, yeah. on the mm-hmm. unit on the Black Rain album yeah, yeah. is mm-hmm. one of my favorite songs because that was our connection. You know, and she, she felt sings. That. Like, that was the first time that people ever heard uh, Dana sing yeah. like that. And her voice is incredible. So, so we're going to pick it back up. So, Maya, uh, tell me about Maya. And we're not talking about uh, Girls Cruise on VH1. <laughs> With little Kim, uh, you know the streets are talking. Hollywood unlock. I, I, Jason Lee minds his motherfucking business. It's my staff who keeps saying, "Ask these questions, ask these questions." <laughs> so, what's up with Maya? Have I met Maya? Yes, sir. You did. I believe so. She ain't here no more. Oh, she. How she sneak up out of here? Where she slide going? out real quick? <laughs> Wait, did she really slide out? Yeah, she been She's slid not- out. <laughs> she went to the bathroom. <laughs> she like hear that nigga come with that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas know. So so now the well, the streets are talking you're in a new relationship. Is that you're off the market? Yeah, I'm off the market. Okay, so when how soon did that happen? Like how long have you been in a relationship? Uh it's going on six months now. Really? Yeah. Do you prefer to be off the market? Yeah. So you're and a relationship it's a, it's a person. Surpri- yes, absolutely. Okay. It's a surprise to a lot of people I know, but I am. Like I I like to have that Keeps you focused. Yeah, it do. Now, what celebrity women slid in your DMs, though? Because, I mean, besides Tori, I know when you came out, they were like, ooh, you know, I got to get that. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't in a relationship, I would definitely tell you. But they, but clearly you caught everybody's attention. Yeah. And so how did she catch your attention? Uh, So I met her. Well, the blush. On, yeah, because it's, it's, it's so weird. I feel like any type of, uh, any type of situation I got, that that comes into my life, it seems to be like something that happens prior to before something happens. So it was like, to me, it was like kind of like meant for me because it was like it's meant. Yeah, yeah, it was like meant. It's like it didn't just come about where I just seen her and was like, hey, how you doing? Let me get your number. It like kind of came into like a, a process. Mm-hmm. I was on I I I seen her on Instagram. You know what I mean? She was already following me. I'm just throw that out there. <laughs> and uh, no, nah, you know you know how Instagram where you see. Like when the you, story, not not the story where you know, page? not the explore page when you when you have you see your your notifications, but the other tab you see what everybody else like. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was on that creep side. Yeah, the creep side. <laughs> so I was on the creep side, and I was just you know strolling, browsing, and for some reason I don't know what made me click on one of my followers like a certain picture, and I clicked that picture. I don't know why. I just I was like, oh, who this? Like I could you know you can't really see it because it's so small. So I just clicked. That. I said, oh, she cute. I went on her page since she was following me. So, you know, I hit that follow back button. <laughs> <laughs> Played it cool. All right, so we're going to switch gears again. So September 27th, the new album, Her Story, is coming out. And by are, the bell. are you excited by that? <laughs> because people, your fans have been waiting. Everybody's waiting, waiting for this album. And here it is. Here it comes. It's like excitement, but like a relief, too. You know what I mean? It's like, because I'm the type of person, man, like, I like to just jump to the new thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. Like, mm-hmm. So being consistent on one project to me was like difficult to mm-hmm. be able to be like, yo, I got to finish this album, I got to finish this album. 
I'd be like, I don't be wanting to finish it. Like, I'd be on some, like, jump to the next thing. So it was a little struggle, but uh, it was fun. It was fun in the process. And I just I just see my, my supporters like, yo, we need this, we need this, we need this, we need this. So it was, like, pressure, too. But at the same time, you know, I'm definitely excited. I can't wait to give them. And I gave them so much music, so they better be grateful. Are there any features on it that you want to highlight? Uh, no major features, you know. Uh, but I do have uh, a couple, you know, a couple artists that um, I have an artist that's signed to me mm-hmm. that's on there as well, and another guy I know that's, you know, he kind of he kind of been on a couple joints with other artists too as well. He's a singer, but everybody know like my my I ain't gonna have no features on my album. It's all in May. It's all in May. So how many tracks and and how many tracks and when you call you call it her story? <laughs> what is her story? It's basically like you know our history is history. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's with his. Like H I S, I just replaced the his with her. Mm. So, what stories are you telling us on on this album? It's just my stories. Is there a song called Tory Bricks? <laughs> <laughs> or just bricks? I mean, I don't no. know. <laughs> no, no, like <laughs> I don't know, man. I had to be messy at some point. I mean, you know, you ain't like you know, my my fans are like, oh, you're getting soft. No, when you like the people you're talking to, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's kind of hard to just. Is you know. it too soon for there to be a song about my? Uh, no, it's actually not. Okay. Hey. It's not. Okay. So, some little inspirations in there. Inspirations, man. When you when you hear this album, it's, it's definitely gonna give you so many different like emotions from different ways. Like it's it's fun, and then you get into the relationship, and then you get into the streets, mm-hmm. and then you get into, of course, the ladies. Like a lot of my stuff on my album is is for the ladies, like because that's just who I deal with on a daily basis, women. You know what I mean? And and then the street stuff. You know what I mean? What I've been through in my past and. Just coming up as an artist and, and everything like that, and just being that person that just don't give a fuck what nobody think about me and just say what I say. You know what I mean? It's just basically what my you know what my supporters know me as. And I'd assume there's another club banger in there, at least one. Mm-hmm. Okay, because who and can the, come on anywhere and you gonna dance? Yeah, to yeah, absolutely. That's a classic, bro. Yeah. I, I I honestly tell people all the time like, is I can't make another one. Mm-hmm. Like, is is that's what that was? First, mm-hmm. did you know that? Like, when you were making the song, you knew that this was gonna be a it. timeless I classic. I knew it was gonna we, be a big record. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be crazy, but I didn't know how much of an impact it was gonna put. Like, I knew it was gonna be a. Big I mean, record. everybody was jumping yeah, on yeah, remixes. It, did you approve every remix? Uh, I like. I mean, I Does approved that... it because it was just like, to me, I looked at it like support. But the main, the actual remix that mm-hmm. I get royalties off mm-hmm. is the one with 50 Cent. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Well, listen, the new... The, <laughs> you're hilarious. The, the new album, Her Story, September 27th, mm-hmm. available everywhere. Download it, get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to even post it for free. For sure. I, you know, I don't do free shit. Uh-huh. But I just like you so much, and I admire everything you're doing, and Thank I respect... You. What you've done in the game, and I just you know hope you continue to go. And if you ever need a feature, I just told Cardi last week I'm available. I don't rap that well, but I can do something. <laughs> yeah, but they, see, you gotta think of it like a feature in a cool way. Like you ain't gotta rap, Talk but your voice we know shit, you. Something. Yeah, like they know who you are. I'm so available. I will do it for it. free. Come on. Let's get it. All right, Young and May in the building, but yeah. now we out. We Peace. out. Thank you. Bye, everybody.